Welcome back to Dylan with Sid Meier's Colonization, where we're continuing the colonization of the Americas as the French. First, uh, we might want to leave in place, since we'll get some ambush bonuses against them when they land. Thankfully, the Iroquois aren't too concerned by our presence in Gunny. Not yet, at least. And we're going to go ahead and move this Chagoon further north. There we go. He's now fortified in Gunny. We are going to need some extra troops for Ironhold. We need extra troops, period, really. And let's set sail for Europe with our coats and tobacco. I definitely prefer being nice to the Indians, but it is very aggravating when the natives do things like block our roads and rivers and we can't go through them. We have to go around them, which slows us down. We cleared that forest and Gunny will be working on getting the fields plowed properly in not too long. I kind of wish the English would just do it already and declare war, but they're not going to. I, I genuinely think that they're like glitched or something. Rum's all the way up to 15, nice. I don't think we have any potential sugar supplies to actually produce any rum. Oh, the Dutch and the English are now at war. Interesting. Maybe they'll go away now. That'd be very nice. Ah, uh, it's probably because the Spanish colonies are near the Dutch, I bet. And the Dutch are being very aggressive. Ironhold got that printing press, which is fantastic. So now we're producing 15 Liberty Bells from the Elder Statesman, which is great. What I'd like to produce now in Ironhold might be... A stockade. Kind of think we might definitely need a stockade. Alternatively, a schoolhouse might let us teach some more colonists. Unfortunately, to teach blacksmiths, you need a college, looks like. So I think we're just going to go with a stockade for now. Man, this caravel is never going to move again. That's probably what's going to happen. It's going to be stuck here forever. First scout is almost back from the far west. He'll be becoming a regular old free colonist in not too long. And of course the English are refusing to leave. It's very nice of them. Oh, this village is on yellow alert. One more step and they'll be at hostile. I need to start sending them some special free goods. Let's sell them some. Let's give them some tobacco and see if that'll make them happy. If we can keep them off our backs, that'll be wonderful. I really do not want to go to war with the Iroquois. And especially now with the English sitting right here, staring at us. Hey, hey, we've got the fields and gunny plowed all the way, so now we can switch to actually producing a proper amount of hammers. So now we can use a carpenter and the gunsmith to produce nine hammers to get that dock built faster. This criminal can go be a farmer temporarily, that's fine. We can actually produce a little bit more food from this game now that I've got this land from the Iroquois since I have Peter Minowit. That's a very nice bonus. Might as well make use of this carpenter here if we can. Although I don't think we can pull it off. We're going to drop our tobacco and our coats. That leaves us with 2,398 gold. We could pick up the free colonists, which we're definitely going to do. And let's think about whether or not we want that merchant man. We're definitely going to need another ship since one of our... Oh, very nice, very nice. A proper farmer making 11 there, or less there. Let's set, let's put him on the 11 tile. We definitely need at least one other ship because of the caravel being stuck there. I'd like to get a privateer to take that privateer out, but there's no guarantee that the privateer will win, of course. It's like a 50-50 shot if you have the same strength. But looking at my colonies, I don't think I have that many things that I need to actually sell. I could really work on producing more cash crops. Probably something like cloth, ideally. I'd really love to produce rum because it's so expensive right now, but I don't think we have access to any sugar production anywhere. You know, the only thing that we could possibly produce is food, cotton, and tobacco. Everything else is just locked away. That and a little bit of ore. So I think cotton production is something that we should get started not too long. But we really do need that greater population period. I want to give the privateer a shot, see if we can free up the caravel, because I don't need a merchant man. We're not producing that many goods. This might be a stupid decision, but let's get the privateer. We're down to 398 gold. I'd like to get some more tools, but I don't think I can... Nope, 700 gold to equip them with tools. It's pretty awful. Let's go ahead and pick us more free colonists, though. We'll send the caravel out first, and then we'll send the privateer out behind it. So we're going to have a 50-50 shot of taking out that enemy privateer. Or at least damaging it and making it go away. Alright, we're back home in Gunny with the scouts right here. So I'm going to turn them into... Well, should I do it here or should I do it down in Ironhold? I want to send those scouts to Proxima to learn how to farm. So that's what I'm going to do. 
Fishing is useful, but farming can produce a crap ton of food as long as you get the terrain set up properly with roads and plows. Alright, let's go trade with the Indians and just gift them. Oh, come on. You don't want the tobacco? They'll take rum, cloth, and cigars. I don't think we have any cloth to give them. I just don't want to train in Proxima at the moment, so we'll set the farmer back to working for the moment. And let's go ahead and have the carpenter do some more work in Proxima. We'll just get some more stuff done that doesn't require tools or not. We should be getting Benjamin Franklin on the next turn, I believe. So we might be able to get the Dutch to leave us alone, since I'm pretty sure that's their privateer, but I'm also, I'm almost certain the privateer is just going to continue sitting right there. I wish they required bringing some cloth. So, once again, I got the music as if the English are trying to talk to me, but I got the notification that muskets went up in price instead. Ah, that's the Founding Father music. Gotcha, gotcha. So now we have Benjamin Franklin, the womanizer. So the King's European Wars have no further effect on our relations between colonies in the New World, and Europeans in the New World always offer peace and negotiations. Who do we want to get next? I think we need to go for Pocahontas. All these other ones don't really interest me. Henry Hudson doubles your fur production, but we've already crashed the price of furs and coats. Peter is the customs house guy that lets you trade with Europe during the revolution. Hernan Cortez, we have no interest in conquering. Sepulveda, he does increasing converts. We're not going to do that. We're going to do Pocahontas. We got the, the warehouse of Proxima built, which is nice. After this, let's go for, I'm kind of thinking an armory actually. Alternatively, we could go for a stable. Yeah, let's go for a stable, actually. We can have pretty good production of horses here because we have such a large food surplus. I think that makes sense. Or I could build a wagon train and try to send more coats out. And yeah, if I build more wagon trains, I could send out tobacco at more of a premium price. But stables are pretty important, too. Let's just go with stables for now. Why not? We don't want the tool production to sustain anything else. We need 50 tolls for the newspaper over in Safe Harbor, which I can't finish at the moment. So we need the carpenter to do something else for a little while. Let's have the carpenter actually make some furs alongside the fur trader. And I think that'll be a pretty good choice. Alternatively, we could have him build some cloth to gift to the Iroquois. I like that idea a lot. So let's do that. So now we're directly convert the four cotton that we have into four cloth, which we can gift to keep the southern village. Uh, they're chilling out, actually. They're chilling out. They might be all right. The French are very good at staying in peace with the natives. It was true in real life, as far as I know. Though, of course, there were issues as well. Uh, Canadian schools. Uh, that was a pretty effed up situation, man. About 40 tools on the Pioneer. I could transfer that over to Safe Harbor and then move the tools that I have over at Iron Hole. I think that's what I'm going to do. And we've got the scout back at Proxima, so let's strip the scout down to his basic colonist form, and then strip his specialization. You had a lot of fun, but now it's time to become a farmer. So we need to take that farmer, put him in the schoolhouse, put the free colonist on the farmer's land, and then the farmer will teach the colonist how not to suck. Oh, and now we have over a hundred horses, we could produce six horses per turn, potentially. I don't think that we need stables. I think we'd be fine with a... Mm, no, let's keep the stables. We can concentrate horse production in Proxima primarily. The strategy guides online talk about how you should distribute at least two horses per colony, which I guess kind of makes sense. But we produce a lot of food in Proxima so that we can sustain horse growth much better. Let's go gift the southern village something cloth real quick unfortunately it has to wait until the next turn it's just because the wagon trains are forced to end their turn when they enter a village or colony strip the tools off this pioneer if that doesn't give us enough to finish the newspaper we need to get some tools from iron hold and we've got this privateer ready to go all right we're going to stay right here where he can't see us and then we're going to get him on the next turn kind of got a bad feeling that we're not going to win that fight but as far as I know, it's basically a coin flip. If we can get that privateer out of here, then we can remove the problem. Oh yeah, I need to try to talk to the Dutch, figure out what the issue is with that. All right, we've got the docks built and gunny. We need to start working on a, kind of think a lumber mill actually. That'll get everything else built much quicker. Yeah, let's work on a lumber mill. Finally got those tools over to Safe Harbor. 
So here comes the moment of truth. We need to find out if we can take on this privateer, mano a mano. I get an attack bonus of 50%. Oh, awesome, awesome. We should probably win the fight on average, but we might not. Nope. Ugh. We're terms to answer, damn, for repairs. We tried. We get another chance later. Oh, wait, no, we pulled it off. Awesome. I misread that. Uh, duh, Amsterdam is a Dutch place. Oh, that was Dutch. Bastards. I guess there's no way to talk to the foreign powers unless they want to talk to you. I can't seem to figure it out. That's okay. And finally, finally, this caravel is free to leave Ironhold. It's been here for like 20 years, 10 years now? I don't even know. Now that we can move around, we can start picking up some more things to take on home. Let's see if this village would like this gift. So now they're in need of rum tools and cigars. I don't want to buy anything from these guys, I don't think. Although maybe I'll buy some tobacco. Let's see what their price is. Uh, it's not even worth it, I don't think. Not at all. That barely helped the alarm. I guess we have to give them a lot of gifts. That's okay. I got rid of the cloth necessity, so we could trade them tools if we wanted to, but we're at the point where we actually need tools. I'm gonna move one of the farmers from Proxima over to Safe Harbor here in a second so that I can start teaching at Safe Harbor. And we'll have these free colonists just do some temporary food improvement in the meantime. English and Dutch have signed a peace treaty, all right. I wish the Dutch would come and talk to us. It'd be nice. All right, built a stable so we can double horse production if we get enough food on hand. I think we might as well go ahead and work on an armory at this point and also pull out one of these carpenters because we don't need them both working here. Realistically, we might not even need them both working there at all. We got that newspaper finally at Safe Harbor, which is fantastic. So we're producing 26 Liberty Bells from the Elder Statesman. Wonderful. After this, I think I'm gonna go with, kind of like to do a fur trading post. Yeah, let's do a fur trading post here. Um, let's actually go back to Proxima, switch off the armory, go over to a weaver shop, and then we'll send the extra carpenter north to Gunny to start working on the lumber mill there and getting Gunny set up more with their armory and all that. We need to go ahead and take some furs back to the old world as well as some coats. Let's do that. There was a English merchant man that was sailing just south of Proxima that we might want to start hunting with our privateer. Gotta move the carpenter back to carpentry and safe harbor to start actually making some progress on that fur trading post. That'll greatly increase the fur production and then we can get weaving set up in Proxima. And once we have weaving, we'll be making a lot more money just from cloth and all that jazz. So let's move the cotton west over towards Proxima. We will equip. Now we'll leave these tools right where they're at. We have just enough for the fur trading post, so we'll move the pioneer over to Ironhold and hopefully get enough tools to equip them there. After moving some tools over to Proxima to build the weaving shop. Let's see if we can find that English merchant man. See if it got away. Oh, he did not get away. So our merchant man has a strength of 6. With our 50% combat bonus, we have a strength of 12. They probably also have cargo at the moment, which makes them a big target because that lowers their strength. We've got the movement, so let's take them on. Come on, baby. Ah, uh, French privateer lost. Wasn't destroyed though, thankfully. We can always come back. And we'll just be gone for uh, maybe 6 turns, looks like. And this farm is going to start teaching the free colonists to do their thing. I'm going to move some more Dragoons over to Safe Harbor from Proxima, just in case the English want to get aggressive. We've got the stockade built in Ironhold. I think we might want to switch over to a blacksmith shop as our next objective here. So let's do that. Colonists in Proxima became a proper farmer. That's fantastic. I'm going to switch them out right there. Let's go ahead and get the scout to learn farming over here in Proxima. The carpenter has arrived so we can get him notched in to start working on the lumber mill. We might even want to get the gunsmith helping out as well. Might as well. It'll produce a few more hammers to get it done quicker. We're only getting 300 gold for 100 furs and 392 gold for like just a few furs. Coats are done six. Ugh. Yeah, we're definitely rapidly approaching the point where we need to focus on Population, tools, guns, and horses, as well as hammers and lumber. So like the cash crops are becoming less valuable to us, although we're going to do the cloth pretty soon, and we'll continue to up our production of coats 
We can't do anything about the rum. We could do a little bit of cigars, but not a whole, whole lot. But once we got those pretty much wrung dry, we're gonna have to focus on just food, lumber, and ore. And Liberty Bells, of course. We've only got 712 gold, ugh. I could rush some more free colonists, but I think that I'd rather start saving up for, say, maybe another blacksmith, because we, we can't train the blacksmith yet, and we're gonna need it. So let's just save up to train a proper blacksmith at 1050 gold. The English are literally sitting with their dragoon above me, their soldier to my south, and their caravel sitting in my port. Seriously guys? I almost want to just declare war on them and be done with it. I'd be better off waiting until the privateer is done though, just to sink that caravel, or damage it at least. Now the Dutch have actually burned down the Cherokee capital unfortunately. They've been burning down a couple of their villages, just being jerks. Alright, we reached 1600, so the time scale is no longer one turn per year, it's now two turns per year. So there's a spring and a fall, that's nice. So it'll be 200 turns until 1700. We should start growing very rapidly. We'll also have access to some new founding fathers that we didn't have access to until 1600, such as George Washington and uh, one of the ones that gives you a flat 20% liberty or revolutionary support in all of your colonies, in addition to whatever you have. Cigars are 12, nice. Muskets are even pricier. Ugh. Yeah, I don't think we're ever going to buy muskets ever again from Europe. And we're making only 220 gold from that, 134 gold from that. That is not quite enough for the blacksmith that we want. So let's set sail, I think, to the new world. Yeah, let's do it. All right, we've got a lumber mill built in Gunny. That means that we can start working on everything else faster. So we can start getting, I'm thinking of blacksmith shop set up next. Yeah, let's go for blacksmith shop. I'm going to have to get the gunsmith to do something else in the meantime, as well as one of the carpenters. Let's get the criminal to do some ore mining. Let's get the gunsmith on some blacksmithery that doesn't allow us enough food to support this colony at the moment. We're going to need to move a expert farmer over to Gunny here pretty soon. We got a furrow trading post and safe harbor. Fantastic. So now we can actually process more furs than we produce from this one square. So we do get furs from some other places, I think, but I might be wrong. So with that done, cathedrals would be pretty cool. They would give us more crosses, but they cost a lot of hammers and a lot of tools. I don't really think they're worth it. But what's really worth it is a college. We need these colleges. We need a college here, and we need a college over in uh, Proxima, most likely. Yeah, let's start working towards that college right now. I think once we start working towards the college, we can pull out a colonist, but let's find out here in a second. If I pull this farmer out, I can keep working on it. Fantastic, good, good. Because I need to get that farmer over to Gunny. I also need more food production over at Ironhold, but I don't quite yet. Well, yeah, let's pull that expert farmer out. Let's swap in a free colonist farmer. We're still making a surplus here. I don't really care about horse production. That's okay. And you know, coats are so cheap now in Europe, it might be worth selling to the Indians. But if we're going to do that, I'd rather do it in a big batch. We could actually sell coats to this village right here. They do want to pay a slight premium for them. So I think I'll wait until I get a full supply of coats ready. And then I'll sell those to the natives instead of Europe. Since the king is screwing us over with low prices and taxes. Yep, even more taxes. Just what I love. 6% raise up to 22%, that's starting to really hurt. We could hold the Proximate Tools party, but we destroy the tools. I don't want to do that. I think we're kind of approaching the point that we're just going to not trade with Europe, honestly. We've got a weaver shop and a expert farmer trained up. So next up, what would we like to do? It might be reasonable to make a tobacconist shop as well here. We can produce a crap ton of food. Because we can do cotton, cotton, food food, food. Not a whole lot of food here, obviously, but a decent amount. I like that idea a lot. Let's do a tobacconist shop here. I'm not a big fan of the horses eating all of our food, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to first equip all of our soldiers as dragoons, if I haven't already. It looks like I already have equipped them as dragoons, so in that case, I'm going to concentrate the horse population into Proxima so that they stop eating my food. We only make four food with this expert farmer. We need to really develop the land around here. Ideally, we leave one for lumber. We can convert one into a food production. 
or can go here. Fishermen, unfortunately, just don't seem to produce very much from this ocean for some reason. Uh, it's because it's considered coast versus a river. So if it's along the coast, touching a tile directly, then it gets six food because of the plus one doubled. Whereas this straight ocean is pretty barren. All right, our privateer is fixed up in Lower Shell. We're gonna bring it back to the New World and see if we can't find some uh, victims. So in Safe Harbor, for instance, we have a surplus of seven food at the moment. If I pack these horses up into the wagon, we have a surplus of 13 food. I'd rather take the food over the additional horses at the moment. All right, we got some free colonists, so I'll take those. And we need to get Gunny a extra farmer very soon. Let's get you to work, please. So now they're actually self-sufficient, thankfully. I need to pull the horses out, though. And we've almost got a full load of coats for the natives. We've got the blacksmith shop done at Ironhold to up to a production of 12 tools. We cannot meet production with our ore at the moment. We need another expert ore miner on the ore position right down there. In the meantime, I think we'd like to go with maybe a warehouse. Or let's build another wagon train. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna need some more if I'm gonna be trading with the natives more often. We got our privateer back. Let's see if we can't go find some, uh, maybe some Dutch to mess up. That'd be nice. I've been looking at the prices and it's just like, man, what's the point? Like, tobacco is selling for four, but we don't produce much tobacco. Cotton's only going for two. And then coats are down to six. It's like, it's almost no point, honestly. Ooh, a English caravel. Hello. And goodbye. <laughs> Sunk. Very nice. I'm very happy to sink an English caravel. I really don't understand what the English plan is here. They've been here for like 50 years just staring at us. And they haven't even spoken to us or demanded anything. We've got enough money now for that master blacksmith, which I think we're going to pick up. Alternatively, we might need some expert ore miners, but they're pretty cheap. Let's get the master blacksmith and let's just head on back home. Hey, hey, we got those coats ready at Safe Harbor. So let's go ahead and let's load up the coats and then let's see what the natives would like to give us today. I'm kind of okay if the English attack my wagon train. They can do it. All right, 516 in exchange for 100 coats. I don't know about that, man. That's still like, well, like the coat price right now is six in Europe, but we have like a 22% tax rate, I believe. So we would make 468 gold if we sold in Europe right now. We could try to haggle with them and get a little more gold but that risks pissing them off, so I'd rather just accept it as it is. So now they need tools and rum, as well as cloth. We're definitely gonna be working on getting cloth production up and running, but there's just no way we can fix up rum production. Let's see what they're offering us for tobacco. 2.5 gold per unit of tobacco. That's actually pretty reasonable. I don't think we're gonna bother though. We produce enough tobacco on our own. So we've got some sugar in our privateer. We could bring that back and turn that into rum to sell. That'd be a pretty good choice. Alternatively, we could keep hunting. Let's keep hunting. We always want to be the one that attacks. So we've got to move carefully here. And this island looks like it might almost be uninhabited, actually. Let's go ahead and start heading back. Oh, no, no, it's inhabited, all right. It looks by the Spanish. It looks like the Spanish used to be here. The Arawaks are alarmed by the English, so the Spanish are down here. That became English. Oh! Oh, that's a galleon. Okay. So the English have a galleon up here. I'm pretty sure a galleon is quite powerful. Strength of 10. Yeah. They'd even beat a uh, privateer. Although, if the galleon were laden with cargo, it would have minus 1, maybe 2 strength. I'm not sure exactly. And then if we attack with a privateer, we get 12 strength. So it is possible that we could win. We just have to be the one to attack. Alright, we got the blacksmith's shop set up in Gunny. I think our next objective is going to be an armory. Although whether or not it's a good idea to start gun production right now might be arguable. Let's go ahead and do the armory. Why not? We've got another wagon train built in Ironhold. I think what we're going to do here is work on maybe a schoolhouse into a college. Once we have enough population at least. I think that's a reasonable choice. And then we've got the tobacconist shop built in Proxima. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I meant to do a weaver shop, didn't I? So I've got the fur trading post, safe harbor, 
I was going to produce cotton here, not tobacco. Right. Sucks. We've already got the Weaver South, I think. Is that it? Yeah, Weaver Shop. Oh, never mind. Well, we can produce some cigars here too. Why not? There's no reason not to. We've got a ton of revolutionary support, and we keep getting to 100% over and over. But I kind of think that we're at the point of not wanting to build anything else here at the moment. Maybe a tri dock. But we need toll production. We just don't have the tools. Let's build another wagon train. We're going to send off silver and tobacco over to the old world. The cotton we're going to keep on hand. The English have not attacked my wagon train. I'm very impressed. I do not know what it is they're thinking. I mean, they're probably not thinking, honestly. If we're lucky, we might be able to ambush that galleon on the way back. Although that's a bit of a risky maneuver. They move six tiles at a time. So we would expect him to reach this distance at most. Let's wait for them right here. See what happens. Now it looks like the galleon is coming down. We got Pocahontas, fantastic. So all tension with the Iroquois and other natives has been reset. And alarm will generate at half speed. In addition to the half speed that the French get, so it generates at, I believe, a quarter speed. So who do we want next? We could get Jean de Witt, which allows trade to foreign colonies. I don't care about that. Ferdinand Magellan. The movement allowance of all naval vessels is increased by one, and the time to sail from the west map edge to Europe is shortened considerably. Eh, might be useful. George Washington. Every non-veteran soldier or dragoon who wins a combat is automatically upgraded. That's pretty nice. Thomas Paine. When Paine enters the Continental Congress, Liberty Bell production is increased by the value of the current tax rate, so it would be 22%. I'm kind of thinking we go with George Washington. Or we could get all missionaries function as experts. Let's go with... Well, actually, we do need more bells. 22% is nothing to sneeze at. Let's take Thomas Paine. We're not at war at the moment, although we are eventually going to be at war. We might even just go to war with the English almost for the hell of it, and to train our soldiers. But that is pretty far off in my opinion. I think that's like a, a near 1700 thing. If I was a lot better at this game, I've seen people win very rapidly. But you don't have to win super fast. In fact, I don't think that you lose if you don't reach independence first. And I've never actually beaten this game, so I'd like to just reach independence period. <laughs> Especially on the hardest difficulty. Alright, Mr. Galleon. We've got some sugar on board and we risk losing our ship. But a galleon is expensive, that's a lot of money, and we could really hurt the English. A galleon is 3,000 coal, it's not as much as I thought, but it is more than a privateer. And they probably got some booty on board. So let's board it, come on. Ah, we're losing one strength from the cargo we have, but we do have the 50% attack. They don't have any cargo at the moment, so I'd say this is a coin flip. Ah, they evaded us. Crap. Oh well. We tried. I think we're gonna come back with the sugar, and we might process that into rum. But there's seriously like nowhere up here that we can produce sugar. We'd have to travel significantly further south and set up some colonies in order to find sugar production land. Let's go ahead and order some expert ore miners from Europe. I'll absolutely do that. We need that ore income over an iron hold here pretty soon. And I kind of think with the lack of money that we're generating, we, uh, we have to... Uh, hello? So the English finally decided to say hello again, and they're probably going to try to shake us down for money. It's a good thing we spent the money we had, so we don't have anything to give them, other than 90 gold. So they're very displeased with the French pirates, and they demand that we withdraw all privateers immediately. Uh, sure, we'll draw them to Europe, fine. I got no problem with that. I was going to attack that galleon, but that's a strong target, so it's alright. We can sell the sugar in Europe anyway. I think it's selling for 6 gold each right now, which is as much as coats, which is insane. Uh, let's ask them to withdraw their forces. Mm. <laughs> they protect valid English interests. Yeah, right outside our walls, sure. Whatever, bro. And we got that free colonist trained up, so now we can shift over the farmer to be a regular farmer, instead of a teacher at the moment. And we're earning 24 extra food per turn, that's wonderful. Got a new colonist in Safe Harbor, so we might actually want to shift that colonist over to Proxima and then train them up as a farmer as well. Our objective here is to just, like, explode, basically. We've got our four colonies here set up. We've got our education system. We're working on tool production so that we can transform the land. We've got our, we've got our relations with the Indians set up to where we generate almost no alarm with them. So we can pretty much just explode 
across the land almost as much as we want, like settle right next to them, do whatever, and not worry about it. That's basically the objective. Let's actually turn this dude farming and then we'll pull the farmer off regular farming duty in safe harbor. Thanks so much for watching Dylan with it. If you liked the video, why not leave a like so that other people that might also like the video have a chance to see it. If you'd like to see more, you can always subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one in episode 7.